When you finish recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, it's Meg. Um, I sent you that email. I wonder if we could schedule a time where we can talk about um, paracycling and how we can integrate that into this year's event. I really look forward to the call. Hey, it's, it's Meg again. Call me back or email me. Great. Right, talk to you later. Hey, it's Meg. Sorry to keep bugging you, but the event's coming. I know the event's coming. I want to make sure there's like, hey, it's Meg. Meg. It's Meg. It's Meg. It's Meg. It's Meg. It's Meg. It's Meg. All right, here we have our triple bunk bed. Patty, the littlest brother, he's on top up here. Dave is in the middle and I get the bottom bunk, but uh, it's pretty cozy because it, it also has the most room, so uh, yeah. This was my very first leg. He, it was named Buffalo Bill. As you can see, it had lots of wear and uh, lots of stickers. This is uh, Honest Abe. He's my second leg. I had this one for a shorter amount of time, so I can't say there was as many memories, but still. Scuba Steve was my first water leg and uh, broke the foot, so we had to retire it. My surgery is really unique because I had cancer in my knee, so either way that would have to be removed, and my options were basically a really high amputation or limb salvage, and neither would have given me the activity level that I wanted. What I chose was rotation plasty. They took off the tumor and they took my foot and my lower calf and they attached it to my upper thigh. And so now that acts as my knee. And here is my trusty old road bike. Um, this is probably older than me. I've been biking since around the time I could walk. So around the time of my surgery, it was pretty much muscle memory. Hey, Jack. Hmm. What are you riding? Um, a bicycle. What do we say? Safety first? Can you say that? Safety first. All right. Have a good ride. Yeah. <laughs> Very early on in my journey, my prosthetist. He told me that, you know, sweetheart, you'll never be as good as you were. I went in there with these high hopes, thinking, oh, they'll make this prosthesis that does this, that, and that, and I'll be, you know, with the kindest heart, wanted to keep my expectations reasonable. And I just remember being kind of blown up for a short time of like, what? What do you mean? But I can definitely say, definitively, I'm better than I ever was. I don't think back a lot to what my life would have been like, because things like the could, shoulds, and woulds aren't real. Either they never happened or they will never happen. It's either behind us or in front of us. My life would have been different, but it wouldn't have been better. My life isn't less. It's really fun to be able to say that I have 11 world championships. I raced for Team USA for about 10 years. I was in the London 2012 games where I won a gold and a silver. I was also in the Rio 2016 games where I won a silver and a bronze. As a para-athlete, I think a lot of people can see aspects of their life reflected in, in my image, in that we all have scars. And when you see somebody like me, you may be like, man, if this like one-legged girl can do it, like. I can do it. As a tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. 
you know, having retired from this world of professional para sport and I came into mountain biking and gravel, I was like, what do you mean there's no para categories? Like, what? Initially, it started out with, I was just speaking with race organizers or events that I went to. Now I have more confidence to cold call people or to write these cold emails, not cold, I mean, warm and friendly emails. I've created para cycling guidelines for gravel and mountain bike. So event organizers can reach out to me and I can help them integrate para athletes seamlessly. But I get a lot of no responses. I get a lot of, oh, maybe we'll do this next year. Our race organizer, he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't understand it. I think it is unreasonable for people with physical impairments to be held to the standard of able-bodied athletes. I think that's inaccurate and narrow. Para means alongside, and I want people to see just how impactful and magnificent para-athletes can be. Back when Jack first got sick, that day our whole life changed. It happened like that. We, you know, it was just immediate. and totally out of nowhere, blindsided, you're leaving town tonight and your son has cancer. And we didn't, we'd never even heard the word osteosarcoma. As a parent, your mind goes to, okay, how do we get Jack the best care possible? How do we do that in a way that we can wrap our family in support? And how do we keep life normal for these two other boys? And that is, I mean, that, that's the parenting challenge of it all. Yes, Papa. <laughs> we went from having these three, like, boys that everyone was healthy and well to like one where he was very visibly not well. And I remember as a mom that being so challenging at first, just feeling like our beautiful, healthy, perfect boy was like broken. Had the surgery and first dressing change was really traumatic for him when he saw that actual connection point and, uh, and he was really sad. Um, it was a really tough moment, mm -hmm. and that was, that's how he rose. It's tough. He gets it out, he's sad about it, and then he's, he let's go. And, and that's what he did. Let's, let's go. Within a week, went up on the back hill on his new bike, jumped a road cut, and, and broke his forearm. Classic Jack Barry. He's been terrifying mm -hmm. uh, to raise because <laughs> he's constantly pushing the limits. Anybody that has to live close to tragedy or trauma. It forces you into this mindset of, you know, what are we gonna do that's fun today? You know, because that's the day we have. This is the day we have. What? I said he beat you. Inventory? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Safety belt? Yep. All right. Leg is on. Leg is on, check. I'm really excited for this weekend. This is gonna be Jack's first bike race. I feel absolutely privileged to get to ride alongside him and get to share in the journey. When I think about Jack, I just marvel at his resilience and his ability to come back to Missoula and just soar. He's 14. I mean, how cool is that? Be 14 and have the world open before him for whatever it is he wants to do was a ripper from day one. To know that cancer came into his life and he's just kicked cancer's ass. I mean, his prior level of function was exceptional and he has no choice but to be exceptional afterwards. Okay, Jackie, you wanna come and talk about what you have on? Do you have your Long John shirt on? No, like, because I'll have like a windbreaker. Else I need to nag you. Oh yeah. I didn't change the saddle. No. Okay, you need to sign. I have everything for his water bottles. I have extra water. Um, he needs one, one water bottle. Um, can we talk again about layers and what you're wearing? Oh my god, mom, I've got, so I've got my bike shorts and my pants mom. and the long gun shirt under my bike jersey and the windbreaker for supplewear. Jack has said that he wants to join the national paracycling team. And I want to do everything I can to make that dream come true for him. Two hands, one foot. Two hands, one foot. He's wanted to do a bike race like this for a really long time. And uh, treatment kind of kept him out of any sort of competition because it was so hard on his body. This is him arriving back to strength.
Thank you. <laughs> right now, he's young, and he's just eager to get out there and do these things. If he's racing against able-bodied people all the time, I think at some point he's going to say, I wish I could race against people like me. Competitive sports make me feel great. Like, they just fill me with this fire that just, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe. I believe we're all more capable than we know. And it's not until we have these challenges do we get to see just how resilient, strong, and able we all are. Thank you.